In the past, I've talked about a number of elements of the A Song of Ice and Fire books that have not carried over to the Game of Thrones show. I've talked about favorite characters of mine who didn't make the cut and entire plot lines that were removed. Today I'm going to get a bit more granular, a bit more specific. Particularly, I'm going to be talking about my favorite passage of dialogue in the entire series. I think the core message of George R. R. Martin's books is conveyed in a single passage of dialogue coming from the fourth novel, A Feast for Crows. If you've read the book, I'm sure you know the passage I'm talking about. What makes it even more frustrating is the fact that the show seems to have set up this passage, this speech perfectly, and then disregarded it, walked away and not used it at all, as they don't seem interested in its message whatsoever. Today, I'm going to be discussing the Broken Man speech and what it means to the series as a whole and why I like it so much and why I really don't like its exclusion from the Game of Thrones. To begin, I'm going to give a little bit of context surrounding this speech. If you've read A Feast for Crows, you probably know that Brienne's story is pretty controversial. If you've only gone through it once, you probably think that it begins, ends, and goes precisely nowhere. However, on closer reflection and a bit of a deeper read, Brienne's story very much seems to be the place where George R. R. Martin is explaining a lot of his themes. First and foremost is what exactly war does to the people who are actually waging it. Brienne's story in this book deals with wandering around the Riverlands, searching aimlessly for Sansa Stark, and later Arya Stark, when she hears that she's alive, but really finding nothing and pretty much ending up exactly where she started, perhaps a little worse for wear. This seems like a wild goose chase on first read, and honestly, it was probably my least favorite plotline in the book the first time I read it. However, on closer examination, I think it really provides insight into Martin's core messaging as to what exactly the war does to the common folk of Westeros. The Riverlands are the main battlefield upon which the War of the Five Kings raged, and we see, up close and personal through Brienne's eyes, what exactly that has done to the people thereof. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I talk about A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones all the time, and I'd really appreciate any support on this video and on the channel as a whole. This particular speech occurs about halfway through A Feast for Crows and halfway through Brienne's story in that book. She happens upon a man known as Septon Maribald, who's a representative of a place known as the Quiet Isle. This island has served as a refuge for a number of individuals who have been scarred by the War of the Five Kings. He leads Brienne, Podrick, and Hyla Hunt off to this area in the hopes that they might have some information on Sandor Clegane, as that is who Brienne is currently seeking out. Along the way, their talk turns to the idea of broken men, these people who have been scarred by the war and turned for the worse. Podrick is unfamiliar with this idea, and it is Scepter Maribald who kind of clarifies exactly what this is and why fear might not be the main emotion we should regard these people with. I'm going to quote this speech for the next portion, so I'll, uh, I'll put the text on screen there. Sir, my lady, said Podrick, is a broken man an outlaw? More or less, Bran answered. Septon Maribald disagreed. More or less than more. There are many sorts of outlaws, just as there are many sorts of birds. A sandpaper and a sea eagle both have wings, but they are not the same. The singers love to sing of good men forced to go outside the law, to fight some wicked lord. But most outlaws are more like this ravening hound than they are the lightning lord. They are evil men, driven by greed, soured by malice, despising the gods, and caring only for themselves. Broken men are just more deserving of our pity, though they may be just as dangerous. Although all are common-born, simple folk who have never been more than a mile away from the house they were born in until the day some lord came round to take them off to war. Poorly shod and poorly clad, they march away beneath his banners. Oftentimes with no better arms than a sickle or a sharpened hoe or a maul they made themselves by lashing a stone to a stick with strips of hide. Brothers march with brothers, sons with fathers, friends with friends. They've heard the songs and stories, so they go off with eager hearts, dreaming of the wonders they'll see, of the wealth and glory they will win. War seems a fine adventure, the greatest most of them will ever know. Then they get a taste of battle. For some, one taste is enough to break them. Others go on for years until they lose count of all the battles they've fought in. But even a man who has survived a hundred fights can break in his hundred and first. Brothers watch their brothers die. Fathers lose their sons. Friends see their friends trying to hold their entrails in after they've been gutted by an axe. They see the lord who led them there, cut down, and they see some other lord shouting that they are his now. They take a wound, and when that's half healed, they take another. There's never enough to eat. Their shoes fall to pieces from the marching, and their clothes are torn and rotting, and half of them are shitting in their breeches from drinking bad water. If they want new boots or a warmer cloak or maybe a rusted iron half-helm, they need to take them from a corpse. And before long, they're stealing from the living, too, from the small folk whose lands they're fighting in, Men vary like the men they used to be. They slaughter their sheep and steal their chickens, and from there it's just a short step to carrying off their daughters too. 
And one day they look around and realize that all of their friends and kin are gone. That they're fighting beside strangers beneath a banner they hardly recognize. They don't know where they are or how to get back home, and the lord they're fighting for does not know their names. Yet here he comes, shouting for them to form up, to make a line with their spears, and scythes and sharpened hoes to stand their ground. And the knights come down on them, faceless men clad all in steel, and the iron thunder of their charge seems to fill the world. And the man breaks. He turns and runs, or crawls off afterward over the corpses of the slain, or steals away in the black of night, and he finds some place to hide. All thought of home is gone by then, and kings and lords and gods mean less to him than a haunch of spoiled meat that will let him live for another day, or a skin of bad wine that might drown his fear for a few hours. The broken man lives from day to day, from meal to meal, more beast than man. Lady Brienne is not wrong. In times like these, the traveler must beware of broken men and fear them, but he should pity them as well. This is the core theme of A Song of Ice and Fire. It is what war does to the individual. I think it's very easy for us as individuals who are not a part of war, or even as readers being involved in the story, to view these conflicts on a massive level from the political players who are advancing these causes through battle for some grand reason. But this speech by Septon Maribald just shows directly what that waging of war does to the individual. You can see through this dialogue the clear pathos in George R. R. Martin, how much he can feel for individuals as they are kind of forced to do war that they don't even want to commit. Things like the Vietnam War, which he conscientiously objected to back in the 60s, very much makes sense given the fact that this is a core element that he wants to advance in A Song of Ice and Fire. And then what does the show do? It throws this speech away. There is an episode called The Broken Man, which is incredibly frustrating. It takes place on the Quiet Isle. There's a guy who's a lot like Septon Maribald, but I think his name is Septon Ray, and he's a show-only character. He does have a speech, and it's good, and it's well-acted. I really like Ian McShane. I really appreciate his work, and I've liked him in a lot of other HBO projects. But that said, it is nothing compared to this speech, and I really wish we could have seen it on screen. Because I do think it communicates a key message that the creators of Game of Thrones really miss. In the later seasons, specifically season 6, 7, and 8, we see the kind of glory of war. We see war just as a spectacle. Like, just turn your brain off, watch the dragons, watch the horses, watch whatever's going on on screen. Don't think about the individuals who are actually going through this. It's really frustrating, especially given the fact that they did very clearly have a layup with this. Episode called The Broken Man. They are going to be at the Quiet Isle. They're doing all the right things, but they're just going complete. They are leaving the ball on the court. It is not, it's... It's incredibly frustrating, and I've been frustrated about this for years, and I'm rambling, and I'm sorry about that. I'm angry. Like I said, Brother Ray's speech isn't bad. It deals with, like, can you come back from, like, doing bad things in war, which that is also a good message. That is a good theme to explore, and I could really see that being a fantastic speech for the Sandor that the show wanted to have. To explain the difference of the book and the show Sandor, in the show, we have a direct confirmation that Sandor is the gravedigger. Sandor is here on the Quiet Isle, and he's going to be re-entering the story and actively doing things. So perhaps in him actively doing things, it could be viewed as him trying to redeem himself in some way. However, the showrunners kind of take the position of that doesn't really matter. Violence is a disease. You don't spread it by, uh, you don't cure it by spreading it, I believe is Brother Ray's quote to Sandor. And then Sandor goes and spreads a bunch more violence for pretty much no reason other than killing his brother who is already pretty much worse than dead. It really doesn't make sense. They could have had an interesting kind of thematic arc for Sandor, like trying to redeem himself and perhaps trying to save Arya from this path of violence and vengeance that could have been great and very well set up by this speech. But as it currently stands, Brother Ray's speech, in addition to just being kind of a poor imitation of the Broken Man speech, just really doesn't make sense for how they end up doing the Hound in the later seasons of Game of Thrones. I actually have a bit of an interesting history with this episode and this speech. The Broken Man was the second episode of Game of Thrones that I've ever seen. I've never really talked about this outside of on live streams, but my entry point into the series was hearing people at age 15 in my algebra class in high school talking about the door and the twist with the time travel mind shenanigans. And I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. I'm just coming off a Lord of the Rings phase. I should start watching this. So I think the first episode I watched was Blood of My Blood. Did I understand what was going on? No, but I thought it was really neat. And I really liked some of the characters. 
And at that point, since season six was still airing, it was pretty, I don't know, the shock and awe of it made me think that, oh, this is pretty good, in addition to being a fairly young kid and not really knowing what good writing was. I finished the rest of season six and then read the books and was completely blown away by the speech and had really wished that it had made the crossover into the show and just been as great on Sheen. Because I'm sure that Ian McShane could have killed this speech. I've actually been informed by Fantasy Haven since recording this video that Ian McShane did, in fact, nail this speech. There's some extra from, I think, the Season 6 DVD features that has him reading this speech from the books. It's, it's, I can't keep talking about this, or I'm just going to get angrier, but oh my god, they were so close. What was your favorite passage of dialogue from A Song of Ice and Fire? Did it make the cut in the show? Do you think the show would have been better for it? What might have changed? I'd love to hear your answers in the comments below. There are some other fantastic examples. Most things Stannis say, but specifically the Peach speech, was close to being similar to this video. In addition to uh, Wyman Manderley's The North Remember speech, of course. Uh, and yeah, I'd love to hear people's opinions below. While you're down there, leave a like, subscribe, all that typical YouTube stuff. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I will have more videos coming for you in the near future here. I'm going to try to get one out next week. I'm not sure that I will. I have a partial brief and an oral argument due. Uh, so uh, we'll see. I'll already be talking too much. So maybe I won't want to talk and make a video, but maybe I will. Maybe the, the spirit will move me. Who knows? See you soon.